Right. Welcome to another session of Crazy Physics Paper Review. Um, you can reach us on www.crazyphysics.org.za or you can give us a shout, 0817442103. Check out what we do, check out our services, and we'll be able to help you. Today we want to deal with one of the challenging topics. We're just dealing with calculations today, so we'll take a full question and quickly run through the question on acid and base as we prepare for metric exams. All right, acid and base. And if you're in grade 11, the video is all yours as well. Acid and base. All right, you're welcome. Um, this is Bishop again. All right, this is Bishop from Crazy Physics. All right, Bishop from Crazy Physics. So let's run through quickly and enjoy ourselves. All right, let's start with this question. The reaction between a sulfuric acid solution and a sodium hydroxide solution is investigated using the apparatus illustrated below. Quickly, we must understand that this is talking about a titration reaction. All right, that's a titration reaction. And we use a titration reaction to carry out a reaction between an acid and a base which would give us salt and water all right and this reaction is also known as a neutralization reaction we're going to say a few points as we go on a neutralization reaction all right okay now the first question says write down the name of the experimental procedure this procedure is a titration procedure. Question done. What is the function of the burette? Look at the burette. All right. What is the function of the burette? It is used to measure, measure the volume of acid used. The volume of acid used. Remember, acid is very dangerous. So we use a burette to measure the volume of acid used because the volume just decreases um, as it goes into the solution. All right, define an acid in terms of Arrhenius. Quickly here, I'm going to define acid and base quickly. Acid first in terms of Arrhenius. All right, remember this is a revision. Arrhenius, Arrhenius. Okay, what is this? A substance an acid is a substance that produces hydrogen ions a substance that produces. please go over your definitions all right or hydronium ion when ionized in water when ionized in water all right now that is an acid according to Arrhenius all right according to Arrhenius and two according to Lowry Brosted according to Lowry Brosted an acid is a proton donor an acid is a proton donor all right what is a base what is a base number one according to Arrhenius according to Arrhenius, what is a base? A substance that produces a substance that produces hydroxide ions hydroxide ions when, when it dissociates when it dissociates, alright? Check the language, dissociate for base. When it dissociates in water. Okay. And um, according to Lowry Brosted, according to Lowry Brosted, a base is a proton acceptor. A base is a proton acceptor. All right. A base is a proton acceptor. Good. Guys, your definition quickly. You know, this video is going to be so full and rich. Um, 
give a reason why sulfuric acid is regarded as a strong acid. Quickly again, what is a strong acid? So we have a strong acid, a weak acid. A strong acid ionizes completely. Completely. Or almost completely in water. Or almost completely in water. All right. And this simply means we have more hydronium ion than the acid itself. Than the acid itself. We have more hydronium ions. Hence we say the equilibrium constant of a strong acid must be greater than 1. Okay. Now if it's a weak acid, what do we say? A weak acid does what? Ionizes weak acid okay ionizes partially partially in water which means we have more of the acid than hydronium ion ka is less than one the same thing would happen to um, the base as well a strong base would dissociate okay a strong base remember I want to answer the question but I just need us to get through all this dissociates what completely completely complete KB greater than one a weak base dissociates partially all right and KB is less than 1. The beauty of this is you can rewind and rewind over and over again. Why still on this? It is important to quickly mention examples of strong acid. Okay? And we just a few examples that learners, as a learner, you need to know. All right. We have HCl. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. HNO3, nitric acid is a strong acid, sulfuric acid. Now, these are common examples that you must know. Hydrogen bromide, all right, hydrobromic acid, okay, um, that's also a strong acid. HClO3, which is chloric acid, another strong acid there. And then you have HClO4, which is perchloric acid, perchloric. So this is hydrochloric. Uh, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, all right, hydrobromic acid, because remember this is hydrochloric, hydrobromic, chloric acid, and perchloric what? Acid. Okay, examples of weak base. All your organic, organic acids are weak base, uh, weak acids, organic acids. Example, oxalic, ethanoic. You know, we did all of this in organic chemistry. These are examples of weak acid all right hydrogen sulfate which is a derivative of my sulfuric acid is also a weak acid so it's called hydrogen sulfate aon it's a weak acid h2 so3 which is sulfurous sulfurous is also a weak acid h3po4 phosphoric phosphoric acid all right, we use that in organic chemistry in preparing alcohols. That's also a weak word, acid. So common examples of strong and common examples of weak. Quickly, strong base. So this is really more than answering a question. Strong base and weak base. So this is a full video on acid and base. Lithium oxide. Actually, actually, um, group 1 base are actually strong base, lithium, group 1 and group 2. Sodium hydroxide, you notice they are in group 1. Potassium hydroxide, group 1, strong acid, all right? Um, calcium hydroxide, okay? Barium hydroxide, you see? We're talking about alkali metals, all right? Um, here, common examples, ammonia, ammonium hydroxide, all right? or any base that is not a group one
base would definitely be um, a, a weak base. Uh, we have your carbonate ion. So anytime you see a carbonate, sodium carbonate, sodium hydrogen carbonate, those are weak bases. Bicarbonate, again. So you have sodium bicarbonate. Those are examples of weak. So you have here examples of strong acid and examples of weak, strong weak, strong base, and you know all of that. Master some of these examples. You need to know them. Why do you need to know them? It helps you with a choice of indicator. I'm quickly going to deal with indicator choice right now. Indicator choices. All right. Now, basically, when we do our type chain experiment, there are three types of indicators that we need to quickly know. More than three, but for us at this level, let's work with three. Missile orange. Missile orange. Um, bromothymol blue bromothymol blue, and phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein, all right. This here works best in an acidic medium. This works best in a neutral, and this works best in a basic. Remember, this is the way your pH scale is also arranged from 0, 7, and then 14 there, all right. Um, so this works best. So remember the arrangement, acid, neutral, and base. And MBP. Okay, we just call it my beautiful princess because we want to arrange it like that. My beautiful princess. All right. My beautiful princess. Okay. We just arrange it like that so that we know the order of arrangement and it becomes very easy for us. So, my beautiful princess. Now, let's do some permutations quickly. All right. I'm going to have a strong acid, a strong base, uh, the type of salt, and an indicator. Quickly. All right. So, if I were to have, okay, this is just acid and base. If I were to have a strong acid and a strong base, I hope you're following we are going to form a neutral salt. And since I'm forming the neutral salt, remember now MBP, the middle one. I'm going to use bromothymol what? Blue. You don't need to cramp this, just understand that. Strong acid and a weak base. The acid is the strong one. I am going to form an acidic salt. Acidic salt. Here it's neutral. Which um, indicator is acidic. Methyl orange. Methyl orange. Weak acid and um, a weak base. Again, weak, weak. I'm going to have what? A neutral. And what do we have here? It's, we're going to use bromothymol blue again. A weak acid and a strong base. Now, the base is strong. I'm going to have a basic salt. And this is where I have of Tarlene. All right. Now, so this is a quick crash course on your choice of indicator. By the way, if I were to do hydrolysis, quickly, hydrolysis. What is hydrolysis? Hydrolysis is the reaction of salt with water. Hydrolysis, the reaction, reaction of salt, of salt with water. Now, this is a neutral salt. The pH after hydrolysis will be equal to 7. This is an acidic salt. The pH would be less than 7 after hydrolysis. A neutral salt will be 7. A basic salt, again, will be greater than 7. So, this is all, you know, theory done on one page. 7.5. Now, let's go answer the question. Bromothymol blue is used as indicator. Write down the color change that will take place in the Ellen Mayer flask on reaching the end point of the titration. All right? If you did this titration at school, which we expect every school to do, all right, is when you pour a bromothymol blue, a bromothymol, and that's where the name actually comes from, in a base, what do you have? You have a blue color. As you keep on titrating, 
the color begins to change until you have a golden yellow all right it's a golden yellow and when you have a color change like this we actually say you have reached the end point of your titration of your titration and this is when you can simply talk about complete neutralization neutralization complete neutralization all right so our correct answer is blue to yellow all right blue to yellow so we said when you have that color change there you now talk about a complete what neutralization okay let's go and do a few calculations now so that's just a quick theory there okay one more thing would mention probably in the next question would be to talk about okay I'm going to talk about it here where we talk about diprotic and monoprotic acids I'm just looking about about three questions in my time frame of one hour now during the titration a learner adds 25 cm cube of sodium hydroxide now that's a base let that write in the things that we know the volume of the base is 25 all right it's always advisable to convert into dm cube by dividing by a thousand 0 0.025 cubic decimeter all right so we have the concentration of the acid base all right and the concentration of 0 0.1 moles per dm cube all right concentration of the base is 0 0.1 mole per dm what cube now you see we want to maintain units to an Elmea flask and titrate this solution with sulfuric acid okay of 0 0.1 so the concentration of the acid is 0 0.1 moles per dm cube okay we have the balanced please always check that it's balanced in this case it is all right now determine the volume so we want the volume of the acid unknown that must be added to neutralize guys you see this four marks here is always a giveaway when you see neutralize complete neutralization think about this formula because you are saying it's your equivalent point all right cb vb okay let's go check now what is na number of moles of the acid go back to your equation it is one here so it's one over number of moles of the base two equals to now what is the concentration of the acid we have all our data here all right volume of the acid we don't know concentration of the base 0 0,1 volume of the base was 0 0,025 okay mathematically 2VA equals to 0 0,025 divide both sides by 2 you have 0 0,0125 all right and your volume is in dm what cube you get four marks there one two three and the formula you get one mark remember when you see complete neutralization think about that formula quickly 7.7 .7. If the learner passes the end point, now this is seven marks. This is what scares a lot of people. If the learner passes the end point by adding five cm cube of the same, okay, so volume excess, volume of acid in excess now is what? 0, 0,005, all right, dm cube. Calculate the pH of the solution. All right, hold on. What is my formula for pH? Negative log hydronium what? Air. Now, what do I need? Where do I start from? Because it's seven marks. This is where I'm going. I need the concentration of the solution. What is my solution? Let's quickly talk about the solution. What do we have inside the solution? We have H2SO4. Uh, 0, 0,0125 dm cube. You remember that we titrated. We have base, all right, sodium hydroxide. What do we have there? 0, 0,025 dm cube. So you have all, and that is complete what? Neutralization. Now we pour in excess. Excess. 
H2SO4 of what? 0 0.005 dm what? Cube. Automatically, what is my volume? Let's check something. My volume is going to be 0 0.0125 plus 0 0.025 plus 0 0.005. I hope that makes sense to you. We add all the volume together. All right? Let's, let's get our answer quickly. 0 0.0125, 0 0.0125 plus 0 0.025 plus 0 0.005 all right 005 what do we have we have 0 0.0425 0 0.0425 dm cube all right remember we said we need to calculate what concentration what is the formula for for our new concentration it is number of moles divided by what volume but i've got a problem as well I'm looking for concentration. I don't even know the number of moles. So what we do is let's deal with the excess acid first. Excess acid. We know the concentration of the acid, 0, 0,1. I don't know the number of moles, but I know the number, the volume of the acid. So what's my excess number of moles? 0, 0,0005 moles of sulfuric acid is my excess. Okay. Now, in the solution, what do I have? In the solution, what do I have? All right, I need space again quickly. Now, in the solution, what do I really have in my solution? What do I have in my solution? All right, remember my solution now. I need the concentration, number of moles over volume. This is my solution now. And what is the number of moles? 0, 0,005. What is my volume? Our volume was what? 0, 0,025. So what is the concentration of my solution now? All right. It's going to be uh, 0, 0,00, how many zero? 3, 5, divided by my previous answer. All right. What do I have? 0, 0,01176. 0, 0,00116. Comma zero zero one one seven six. Is it a double zero? It's one zero. Zero comma zero one one seven six moles per dm what cube. Now this is the concentration of the solution. Because I've got number of moles of this available. The other number of moles of acid and base have neutralized each other. And this is the volume. Alright, so this is the concentration of the solution. And my concent this actually H2SO4 now. Alright. Why is it smaller than the other concentration? It is smaller because we have excess volume of, the, of a neutralized solution now. All right? Remember, dilute and concentrated. Now, what is pH? pH is equal to negative log hydronium ion. There's something very important here. Sulfuric acid is a diprotic. Quickly, we are going to do a definition now. Diprotic acids are acids that donate acid that donates two protons all right if it's mono mono means it donates just one if it's poly we are saying more than one now what the concentration i have here it, of this is just for one all right it's just for one so because h2so4 all right Okay, let's, let's do this. Let me just quickly show you something here. What would happen here? All right, is to have SO42 minus plus what? That's what we actually have. All right, let's, let's, let's just deal with this one first quickly. All right, so we have that. So we're talking about this. Is that okay? But if I were to add water now, if I were to add water, what are we going to have? SO42 minus plus 2H. You see there. All right. That's what. No, this is H2O. All right. You see, we're going to have that. Okay. But this is not balanced. To balance this, we need 2 here. All right. So we have 4 plus 2, 6, which is 6 there. 2 hydrogen, 2 oxygen atoms, 2 for sulfate. Now, do you see it produces what? 2. That's why we call it di 
protic. Hence, my pH now becomes negative log 2 times 0, 0,01117. 2, comma, it's 0, 0,1176. 1176. This 2 comes from there. All right. What's my answer going to be quickly? And let's check our final answer there. It's going to be negative log 2 times 0, 0,01176. And my answer must be acidic, 1,63 pH is 1,63 and you have seven marks please go over the video quickly um, and try to check the whole system let me run through another question very very quickly another question all right here we go the balanced equation below represents the first step of ionization of sulfuric acid in water okay ionization write down the formula of the two bases i'm just going to work on the question i i hope it's very visible for you when we work on the question now which one is a base okay let's write it down here for clarity h2so4 plus h2o now this is the first step the other one i did in that question was already a full ionization now this is the first step because it produces two so we have a first step and a second step what do you notice here it's H2SO4 here, it is SO4 minus, which means this one donates here, a proton. If it donates, this is an acid, and this becomes what? A base. When an acid donates a proton, it automatically becomes a conjugate base. All right? So if this is a conjugate base, looking at the reverse reaction, we donate here, all right? Looking at the conjugate reaction, actually this receives, okay, because H3 0 to H2 2 0. So this becomes what? An acid and a base. But on the side, I'm going to have a conjugate acid. Write the formula of two bases. What are my base? H2O and HSO4 minus. Remember, when an acid donates, it becomes a conjugate what? Base. You cannot have two bases on one side. It's a base and the acid. Already you have identified this one as the acid, automatically that becomes a base. Is sulfuric acid a strong? I won't waste time on this. It is strong because it ionizes what? Completely. Now you get the whole drift of acid and base. Let's run through the calculations. Let us use the reaction of 0 0,15 mole per dm cube sulfuric acid. What is that? Concentration of the acid is 0 0,15 with a sodium hydroxide solution in two different experiments okay the balanced equation for the reaction is given as such now they use 24 cm cube of sulfuric acid okay we have the volume in the first experiment 0 0.024 now i'm moving because we understand what i did there in a titration towards neutralize 26 so volume of the base is 0, 0,026 dm cube. What are we looking for? Concentration. Remember what we said. If you see that word, what do you do? Na over Nb equals to what? CaVa over CbVb. Now, what's the number of moles of the acid again? I go to my balanced equation. It's 1, base, 2 there. Concentration of the acid, we're given 0, 0,15. Volume of the acid, 0, 0,024. Vol vol uh, concentration of the base is unknown. And volume of the base is 0, 0,026. All right. Mathematics here now, quickly. What do we do? We cross multiply. All right. So I'm going to have 0, 0,026. CB should now be equal to, let's multiply, 2 multiplied by 0, 0,15 multiplied by 0, 0,024. And what do we have here? 7 times 2 times 10 to the power negative 3. You can write it like that. It's fine. Since we're still calculating, 7, 2 times 10 to the power negative 3. Okay, what do I do? Can I divide both sides now by what? 0, 0,026 divided by 0, 0,026. What do we have? 0, 0,276, which is 0, 0,28. Concentration of the base is 0, 0,28. Remember your unit, moles per dm cube. 
five marks. Five marks. One for the formula, one for the ratio, numerator, denominator, final answer. You have five marks. All right. In another experiment, 30 cm cube. Okay, in another one. Let's check. In another experiment, 30 cm cube of the sulfuric acid. Hold on. The volume of the acid now is 0, 0,03 dm cube. But we are talking about the same acid, so it is still 0, 0,145 moles. Remember, please read your question carefully. It says of V is added to 20 cm cube. Okay, hold on. Volume of the base now is what? 0, 0,02 dm cube. And the concentration of the base, you see, we actually got it right. 0, 0,28 moles per dm what? cube. Now, calculate the pH of the solution. Hold on. Listen here. They did not talk about complete neutralization. So what we have here is simply what? Incomplete. How do we do this? Now, this is grade 11. Incomplete neutralization. When we talk about incomplete neutralization, guys, we're talking about your limiting reagents and your excess. Limiting and excess reagent okay let's quickly go check um let's do something together here i'm going to have h2so4 here and i'm going to have my sodium hydroxide okay what is the volume of the acid we used again we use 0, 0,03 what is the concentration of the acid it's 0, 0,15 what is the volume of the base 0, 0,02 and volume of the acid, sorry, concentration of the base is 0, what? 0,28. Now, what we need to do quickly is to calculate the number of moles of both of them. Number of moles is CV, which is 0, 0,03 times 0, 0,15. And this would be what? Um, 0, 0,0045 moles. Here, Number of moles, again, CV, which is what? 0, 0,02 times 0, 0,28. What are we going to have? 0, 0,056 moles. Okay. Now, there was neutralization, but there's something excess. How do we now deal with our excess? I want us to follow through. Go back to your equation. Do you see that one mole of the acid will react to two moles of the base? So, one mole of H2SO4 requires what two moles of sodium what hydroxide now let's check how many moles of the acid do i have because i want to find out what was neutralized zero comma zero zero four five moles of acid all right now how many moles would that require do you notice for every one i need two so what am i going to need here it's two times zero comma zero zero four five moles of the base which is what 0, 0,009 moles. Now, for complete neutralization, for complete neutralization, I need 0, 0,0045 to neutralize 0, 0,009. But here is my worry. I need 0, 0,009, but I only have 0, 0,0056. I hope that makes sense. I need, because of my ratio 1 to 2, I need 0, 0,009. Okay. But I have what? 0, 0,0056, which means what I have is not enough. If it's not enough, automatically it becomes my limiting what? Reagent. Okay. Grade 11. Now, if it becomes my limiting reagent, what do I do? I start calculating from there. I start calculating from my limiting reagent. Okay. Again, one mole of sulfuric acid requires what? Two moles of sodium what? Hydroxide. But how many moles? I'm going to start from here now. Zero, because this is what controls my reaction. Now, I need half. Remember, this is two now. We're going back to one. So what will I need here? I'm going to need 0, 0,00586 divided by two, which is what? 0, 0,0028 moles 
of H2SO4. Let's stop, let's pause a bit. For complete neutralization, I'm going to use 0, 0,0028 moles to neutralize that. So that means this is finished. But unfortunately, what do I have? I have 0, 0,0045 moles of the acid. But what do I need? I need just only 0, 0,0028 moles of H2SO4. Do you see now that my sulfuric acid is excess? So number of moles of excess sulfuric acid, what will it be? 0, 0,0045 minus, because I didn't use this. And that will be what? 0, 0,0017 moles of H2SO4. That is excess. Beautiful. So in my solution, hold on. In my solution, I have acid, I have base. All right? Volume of the acid, 0, 0,03. Volume of the base, 0, 0,02. But now, in this, some of, some of the number of moles of the acid has been neutralized by the base. But what I have that did not react is 0, 0,017 0, moles. Concentration now is number of moles divided by volume. What's my excess? But what is my total volume of solution here? 0, 0, what? 5. We add this and this because it's all in solution all right so concentration is 0, 0,017 okay concentration is 0, 0,017 divided by what 0, 0,05 which is 50 cm cube what's my answer 0, 0,34 okay so concentration is 0, 0,34 moles per dm what cube but what am i looking for ph then i come again and look for my ph how do i get my ph ph equals to negative log concentration of that remember i am dealing with sulfuric acid which is diprotic ph now equals to negative log two again we did that earlier on two times what zero comma three four we're expecting it to be very acidic, so let's go check our answer. Negative log 2 times 0, 0,34. And what do we have? All right, 0, 0,167. All right, which is um, 0, 0,17. pH, therefore, is 0, what? 0,17, which is very acidic, very, very acidic i hope that makes sense to us okay um here we omitted a zero it's 0, 0,034 0, 0,034 remember if you rewind it was 0, 0,017 divided by 0, 0,05 we omitted one zero while writing down so what do we have 0, 0,034 all right and now we say negative log um, 2, sorry, 2 times 0, 0,034. Okay, what do we have? It's actually 1,16. 1,16, all right, because of the 0. pH is 1,167, which is 1,17. One, all right, 1,17. Done. That's how we work through acid and base there. Okay, good. Uh, let's check one more question all right here we go with another question ammonia ionizes in water to form a basic solution remember we said ammonia is one of our weak bases right to form a basic solution according to this is ammonia a weak acid or a strong again if you know your examples it's a weak why it dissociates what partially Go back to the first question where we spend a lot of time doing a catch-up. Write down the conjugate acid of ammonia. Let's check something. Conjugate acid. Ammonia is a base. So what happens? It receives a proton. 
Okay, let's check something here. If it receives a proton, how many hydrogen atoms am I going to have? I'm going to now have what? Four. Okay, hold on. Now, if you notice, the net charge here is zero. But here I am adding an extra proton. So zero plus one, what would that give me? Positive one. We have that there. All right? Look at water. We are losing. Net charge is zero. If I'm taking away a proton, zero minus one, I am left with hydroxide ion and that's a minus one. That's where the charges come from. So write down the conjugate acid of ammonia. This is my answer. That's an acid now, but it must have a plus, remember. NH4 plus, which is ammonium what? Aeon. It's no longer ammonia. Ammonium aeon. Dative covalent bond. Identify one substance in this reaction that can act, behave as an ampholite. What is an ampholite? Substance that can behave as an acid and a base. All right. And a good example of that is water. But sometimes, you know, learners are only exposed to one example of ampholite, and that's just water. Quickly, let me talk about how to quickly get more examples of ampholite. Number one, we said water. Okay, look at my second example. Let us look for a polyprotic acid, which is H2SO4. Okay. H2SO4. Let me write it on top here. H2SO4. If I lose, because it's a poly, it is going to be HSO4 minus. Remember where the minus is coming from? 0 minus 1. I can lose again, and it becomes SO4 2 minus. Where is this 2 coming from? Minus 1, minus 1. Now, this is another example of an ampholite, hydrogen sulfide ion. Why? This can accept if it accepts a proton, it becomes this. This can lose a proton. If it loses a proton, it becomes that. So if it accepts, it acts as a base. If it loses, it acts as an acid. So that's an example. Another example. Let me give you one more. So here's my second example. Third example. Look at this. Phosphoric acid. All right. If it loses, I'm going to have... There's a minus there now, 0 minus 1. I can lose again, HPO4, 2 minus. By the way, I can lose another one. So what is this type of acid called? This is actually, it loses how many? 3. This is a triprotic, or we just call a poly. All right, look at my examples quickly. This guy can accept, can lose. If it accepts, it's become this. If it loses, it becomes that. Another example of an ampholite. Look at this one again. If it accepts, it becomes that because the number of hydrogen atoms increase. I can yet lose, again, another example. So you have four examples of ampholite and you are no longer stuck. In case an examiner says, apart from water, you know, you have a few more examples that you can use. Okay. Elena adds distilled water, all right? Elena adds distilled water to a soil sample and then filters the mixture. The pH of the filtered liquid is then measured. He then gradually adds ammonia solution, all right? Adds ammonia solution to the liquid and measures the pH of the solution at regular intervals. The graph below shows the result obtained. Awesome. Here's the graph. Is the soil sample acidic or basic? Refer to the graph. Let's read again. Elena adds distilled water to this and filters the mixture the ph is measured that's my first ph look at my ph it's four so it is what acidic give a reason for your answer ph is less than what seven two marks calculate the concentration of the what hydroxid ions all right in the reaction mixture after adding four cm cube of ammonia Okay, let's go check. Here we added 2. This is our 4. Now, what is the pH at 4? In between, between 4 and 8, our pH there is 6 because it's an interval of 2. So, my pH equals to what? 6. What am I looking for? I am looking for the concentration of hydronium ions. Hydroxide ions. Hydroxide ions. Okay, what's my formula for pH? 
my pH, I would do this in two ways. My pH is negative log, all right? So 6 equals to negative log of that, all right? What do I do? Multiply both sides by negative. Negative 6 equals to log of hydroxide air, hydronium ions. What do I do now? I look for my shift log, which is called antilog. All right, I'll show you on the calculator right now. What would this be? You go to your calculator, all right, and press shift. Okay, let's clean our calculator. Shift log. See what that gives you? Of what? Negative 6. And what do I have? I have 1 times 10 to the power negative what? 6. 1 times 10 to the power negative 6. But this is not my answer because this is hydroxide, hydro hydronium ion. Also, ionization of water at 25 degrees Celsius now gives us this. 1 times 10 to the power negative 14. Please run to your formula page and check that. So what do I have? I need this. 1 times 10 to the power negative 6. All right. This is what I'm actually looking for. So what do I do? I just divide both sides. And what's your concentration of hydroxide going to be? It's actually going to be 1 times 10 to the power. That should be negative. What? Uh, because now if you use your mathematics, it's negative 14. Okay. Neg you can just do it with your... Okay, let's, let's do it like what you would do in an exam. Because we want everyone to be able to answer the questions. Divided by 1 times 10 to the power negative 6. And what's my answer? 1 times 10 to the power negative 8. Negative 8 moles per gm what cube all right okay but if i were to try some other way look ph plus poh equals to what 14 6 plus poh equals to 14 what's my poh my poh equals to what 8 then i can say um poh equals to negative log now it's changing. I'm using OH here, OH here. What's my base? This is 8 equals to negative log of that. So what do I do? Negative 8 equals to log of what? And what do I do here now quickly? I go back to my calculator and look for what? Um, shift log of what? Negative 8. And what's my answer? Again, concentration of hydroxide ion is 1 times 10 to the power negative 8 moles per gm what cube awesome okay um, you have two marks apparently this question is not over all right 7.3 a tech elaborated technician wants to determine the concentration of hydrochloric acid sample okay he adds 5 cm cube of the sample to 495 cm cube of distilled water to give 500 cubic centimeter of the dilute. Now it's dilute because we added acid to water. Guys, you do not add, do not add water to acid. Why? The first drop of water boils and may splash okay which causes an explosion it's an explosion there so what do we do we actually add we add acid to water because it can be contained all right now during the reaction 50 cm cube of the dilute okay let's let's check here now 50 cm cube of the dilute what hydrochloric acid so i know my volume of the dilute acid as what 0 0.05 gm what cube okay um reacts completely with 0 0.25 you see they said it reacts completely 0 0.25 grams of sodium carbonate okay the mass of sodium carbonate is what 0 0.29 grams the balanced equation for the reaction is this. Check if it's balanced, because if it's not balanced, we're going to have issues there. All right, balanced. Calculate the concentration of the 
hydrochloric acid sample this one all right now what we need to do let's work with this reaction it says Na2CO3 plus 2H. I'm just going to work with the side. Okay, what do we know? We know the volume of the acid, 0, 0,05. Here, I do not know the concentration. of the. Remember here, we're dealing with the dilute now because we used the dilute. All right? Oh, why am I writing this here? Volume of the acid is 0, 0,05. Concentration of the dilute, not known. By the way... I know the mass of this as 0, 0,29. Now, if it is complete neutralization, what does it mean? One mole of sodium carbonate there reacts with what? Two moles of hydrochloric acid. Question is, how many moles of this do, now, do I now have? How many moles of this do I have? Okay, how do we calculate our number of moles? Our mass is 0, 0,29 over. What is the number of moles? Now, sodium, if you check your periodic table, is 23 times 2, which is 46. Carbon is 12. And oxygen is 16 multiplied by 3. All right. If you run to your calculators quickly, what are we going to have? It's going to be 0, 0,29 divided by what? That would be 46 plus 12 plus 48 and we have 2,735 times 10 to the power negative 3 all right 2,735 okay we can just leave it as 2,735 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles of sodium carbonate remember one mole of sodium carbonate will react with what two moles of the acid automatically i have two comma seven three five times ten to the power negative three here i need double because it's ratio one to two so let's multiply that by two quickly what do we have five comma four seven one six all right we don't want to round off here five comma four seven all right five comma four seven moles of HCl. Now I have the number of moles. Remember now for my acid, what do I have? Number of moles now is 5,47 times 10 to the power negative 3. All right. Moles of hydrochloric acid. And I also have my, what do I have? We have the volume of the acid as 0, 0,05 which means I can calculate the concentration of the dilute which is number of moles divided by volume 5,47 times 10 to the power negative 3 divided by 0, 0,05 now going to my calculator I still have my answer there so I am not actually rounding off my answer this is divided by 0, 0,0 what 5 and what do I have? 0, 0,05. What do I have? I do now have what? Concentration is 0, 0,1094. 0, 0,1094. All right. 0, 0,1094 moles per dm cube. Now that's the concentration of the dilute. But the question wants the concentration of the sample itself. How do we deal with that? One of the things we need to know is when you make a dilute solution, the number of moles, the number of moles of the dilute is equal to the number of moles of the concentrated. Because the number of moles I picked from here is what I now pour in here. So the same number of moles is present. The only difference is the volume. So how do I calculate my number of moles? It is concentration times volume. All right. So here it's dilute, dilute, concentrated, and concentrated. Okay. Now what is the concentration of my dilute? That's what we got. We got 0, comma, what, what do we have? 0, 0,1094. 0, 0,1094. 
all right and now what do we have the volume of the dilute the volume of the dilute the whole volume is 500 cm cube all right which is going to be multiplied by 500 divided by 1000 remember would be 0, 0,5 all right because we have 500 cm cube there so we always divide and that should now be equal to i don't know the concentration of the concentrated acid by the way i know the volume of my con because we took 5 cm cube here so if we take 5 cm cube the concentration of the concentrated no the volume of the concentrated acid is 5 cm cube also we divide by a thousand what are we going to have zero comma zero zero five all right zero comma zero zero five so we can simply calculate by dividing both sides by zero comma zero zero five zero comma zero zero five now what do we have the concentration of the sample what are we going to get remember i still have this answer this answer now because i want to keep my answer answer multiplied by 0, 0,5 divided by 0, 0,005. What's my final answer? It's actually 10,94, which is very concentrated. 10,94 moles per dm cube. That is the concentration of the sample. So this is what you need to keep remembering, that the number of moles of the dilute is equal to the number of moles of the concentrated when we are making um, a dilute acid all right we've hit the one hour max session all right so this is where uh, this is the part, first part of acid and base you would also get the second part where we deal with about four or five more questions just to you know look at a whole lot of things in one of the videos we would actually deal with percentage purity so that we can see how to work through in an exam Remember, when you see complete neutralization, don't forget, once you talk about complete neutralization, remember to use your formula, which says Na over Nb equals to CAVA over CBVB. This is a grade 11 concept. But when it is incomplete, incomplete, what do we talk about? In, whether you talk about incomplete or you want to look for percentage purity, you need to talk about your limiting and your excess reagents. Once you get your limiting reagents, remember, you start calculating from your limiting reagents. All right. Okay. All right. Again, this is another production. This is another production of... Um, crazy physics all right we hope this has been very very beneficial to you you remember how to get to us get to us on the web page get to us by email get to us by um, sending us a phone message and we will be able to assist assist you go to the website and get more videos go on YouTube when you get to YouTube just type crazy physics you'll get more videos that will assist you both in physical science and maths. And before we sign out, um, just to let you know some of our materials quickly, we have our physical science material, all right? We have our physical science material. Therefore, physical science is a textbook, it's a workbook, and um, it will guide you through. So both a textbook and a workbook. And for maths as well, we have what we call our mathematics spectrum book, all right? Our math spectrum, which would help you with math, whether you're in grade 10, grade 11, or grade 12. All right, you can get more info on the website, um, www.crazyphysics.org.za. This is Bishop signing out again. See you in our next session. Keep well. And good luck in your exams. Thanks.